is to review the governance re review and scheme. Uh, and members have, have been doing some, some work in respect of uh, preparing for that and preparing for scrutiny. And uh, they were keen, keen to understand the position of the combined authority and where we are moving in terms of scrutiny. Uh, and were wanted to engage more with the combined authority members. Uh, we discussed that with the chair of the combined authority, Mayor Anderson. Mayor Anderson uh, has been able to find some time this morning, I think it's only got a short period of time within his diary today, to come and speak briefly about his views around scrutiny and how scrutiny should develop. So uh, we'd like to switch, switch the agenda this morning to, to hear Mayor Anderson's comments, and then we'll be able to develop further the, the, that discussion as we pick up item seven on the agenda. So with your agreement, senses it's part of the problem why there hasn't been uh, information cascaded down to you and to other people. It's because, as I said at that time scale, what a big problem for us has been the capacity. So while David has been uh, responsible, for instance, for uh, the constitutional side and the scrutiny uh, side, he's also, you know, also been doing his day job. 
I'm equally every other one of the chief executives and officers have been doing their day job. Now we'll get the opportunity to have more capacity, which means that hopefully, instead of frustratingly for me and for leaders, is that sometimes we get reports given to us a day or two days before we actually have to make a decision on them. And that's happened. It's happened regularly. It's happened too regularly, uh, in my view. And I'll make that uh, honest um, you know, comment to you. But as we get more capacity, it means that we'll be able to do things differently, have the capacity to be able to, be able to uh, provide reports earlier. It'll also give us the opportunity to have, for instance, a host site uh, where you know, we can put information on prior instead of you know, a couple of days or a week before we have a meeting, a couple of weeks, and that you get them in advance as well so that we can genuinely scrutinize them and make inputs into the system rather than being reactive proactive, why haven't you done this, why haven't you thought of this, have you engaged with that, have you discussed that, that's a better way of scrutiny, a proactive way of scrutiny rather than a, a, a reactive, because scrutiny isn't just about holding to account of people, it's actually making sure that we get the best results out of the decisions that we make, and I think equally, you know, for you as uh, uh, members of the scrutiny panel, you also have, uh, if you like, a responsibility as we do as leaders, we meet as the combined authority to our own sovereign bodies, our own councils. So, you know, I would like to see the scrutiny um, much more involved uh, in, in other ways, like, for instance, making sure that either myself or the cabinet members are uh, reporting to uh, your authorities and scrutinised in a way that they should be around some of the decisions that are getting made, whether it's, you know, a great example adult social care. Now, you know, there are people who argue we shouldn't be negotiating on or discussing uh, the health service and in particular adult social care. Well, the combined authority leaders, uh, five out of the six, have made the judgment that we should enter into discussions. Now, as we do enter into discussions and we do start talking, then there's a real role to play for scrutiny to make sure that we are getting uh, what we want out of it better uh, outcomes for the people that we represent. So that will be scrutinised, but not yet scrutinised when the decision is done and talk about engaging in the process. Now that's up to the, uh, the chair, uh, if you like, the uh, executive member for that particular area of health, which is Andy Moore. Now Andy, I'm sure, will be happy to uh, attend scrutiny <coughs> sessions uh, for people interested from your select committees in that area that's the way the process should work, in my view, that you get an opportunity to engage uh, with uh, those members to scrutinise some of the things that we're talking to uh, governments about, for instance, or how we uh, develop uh, some policies and ideas. So it's a bit of a chicken and an egg in, in, in a sense that the combined authority from uh, the Liverpool City region's perspective was uh, only a new concept, sort of 18 and we've been developing uh, that. And again, what I would say to you is that we've got um, a lot of information to take into account from central government around the devolution agenda and how we're in, entering into the negotiations. But it has to be, it fundamentally has to be engaging and involvement of members within the borders. It's simply as important for me as how you run your own council. But what it can't do is replicate that. It can't do. It's got to uh, make decisions. Because let's also be absolutely clear, is that the decisions that we um, are given authority to make by central governments, and I use that word um, you know, advisedly, because it is, um, with restrictions, most of the things, most of the things that we are negotiating from central governments are real fence decisions that only for us to be able to do certain things and not to be able to take them you know, on the tangent in, in different places. We have strict criteria to meet. For instance, the gain share money has a gain by five year uh, timetable in it. And if we're not delivering on the 
this year in terms of what it's supposed to do, then it can be taken away. And that's why when people, uh, you know, in my view, who are ill-informed uh, or just want to make mischief, criticise uh, the structure that we're putting in place, do so because they don't understand what it is we've got to deliver. You know, we've got uh, half a billion pounds of uh, investments in terms of strategic investment funds, the single investment pot, we've got the gain share money. And the, uh, the, the structure that we're putting in place will cost less than 1% of, of that total. And the reality is, is that it's less than uh, what other authorities spend, or certainly what the central government spend. And it's important that we have the capacity to deliver, because that's, you know, in my view, taking on this challenge, if you like, uh, is got to be uh, done. But it's got to be done with the ability to actually be able to make a difference, and that's why we need that. I mentioned before how David, for instance, and other chief executives have been trying to do stuff here that helps us move forward, as well as doing stuff uh, back at the ranch, and that's not the way we should be doing things. We should actually be having quality people uh, being able to pull together not only how we uh, deliver on the negotiated devolution deals, but how we look forward to negotiating more devolution as well, and, and that's crucially important, that we don't just sit back and, and uh, you know, do what we uh, have negotiated, but we're actually looking at and developing ideas and things and policies and processes and negotiations with government about how we actually get more. So, you know, it, it is the whole process evolving, and it also means that uh, scrutiny evolves with it and, and I think that's the, 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 you know, my message to you is that I'm not scared of scrutiny. The more scrutiny we have, the better um, and uh, you know, it is not about politics, it's about actually making sure that we are doing the right things in the right way that affects us all and that's the importance of having scrutiny and that's why you know, I'm not afraid to have uh, an independence, whether that's independence of the political groups or whether it's independent somebody from outside. Because as I said, the better scrutiny we have, the more scrutiny we have, the more easier it is to explain to people why we're doing the things that we're doing. And that's my view on scrutiny, and that's my view on, as currently chair of the combined authority, how we will shape scrutiny for the future. But I just make this final point here, that we don't have to wait until uh, next May uh, to develop our ideas on scrutiny, it's long overdue and it's more important, just as important that we do it now, because the combined authority will still exist, the combined authority will still have a role to play in the new structure, indeed it will be at the heart of that structure, and the scrutiny process and the scrutiny committee will play just as an important role as any other area within the combined authority. But I won't that be a chair to hear you're not scared of scrutiny, Joe. I, I would be a bit worried if you were. Um, this, is, this has been a fledgling <coughs> scrutiny committee. We, only, we were only formed two years ago. And I appreciate what you said about everything's decisions have been made on the hoof because they have, you know, governments have forced us into a corner, take it or leave it. So we appreciate that. But from scrutiny, and scrutiny is crucial. It sounds like you've taken a few things on board there that we've already adopted on the will, which is good. But we as a, what we've got to find out sooner rather than later is what form this committee is going to take. Now, after devolution next May, and it will soon be here with the new Metro Mayor, it's a huge, huge undertaking. <laughs> Scrutiny is huge and it's vital. It is absolutely vital. And pre-decision scrutiny is, is vital as well. So we're not just looking at things after the decisions have been made. But we need to know as a, as a committee 
how this is going to devolve. Are we going to go? Are we going to be broken up and form committees like select committees in, in the Commons, where we'll be looking at different things? We, we'll all be in subcommittees, and we'll need a lot of members to do this. I might add, and do it properly, and it, it must be done properly. So we need to know, Joe. I'll appeal to you. Whatever format you envisage, and the rest of the leaders envisage, the scrutiny is going to take. We find out as soon as possible. And we certainly do, between now and May, we need more information. We're coming to these meetings and we're, we're basically blind. We're trying to pick things out of the air that we, we want to scrutinise. And it's tinkering around the edges, really. But we really do, it's vital to the whole process that we have effective scrutiny. Thanks, Chair. Okay, is, is it okay if I, because that's, I and mean, then I'll, I'll just pick up each one in, in, in the, I mean, you're absolutely spot on, it's not that, that I disagree with you, that the, the, about the frustration part of how you've had to deal uh, with, with that now. And, and in some senses, it's also uh, making, if you like, an, an honest admission that, that what we've, because of process that we're engaging because, you know, as well as uh, every sort of individual lead and every chief executive and everybody else has been doing their own day jobs, that, that what we've been getting is reports presented to us based on uh, decisions that we just have to ratify, sometimes with the left, sometimes with the left making the decision, but we as the accountable body just ratify. And that's a huge percentage of the chunk of the things that we do. So we have very little control over the decisions that are being made it, some, on some occasions. And on some occasions, it's 50% of the decisions. In some cases, it's, it's more the other way towards the combined authority. But in each of those occasions, there's a caveat to each of those decisions that it's usually tied to funding, and it's usually tied to a ring fence fund. So it usually has been just a question of nodding it through, because that's it. If you look at the, the, uh, the transport, the regional growth fund transport, it has a set amount of criteria. If it meets that criteria, then it's absolutely agreed. If you look at the skills and stuff that we've invested in different parts as a combined authority in some of the uh, institutions uh, with, across the city region, the, the uh, higher education institutions and community colleges, that's been scrutinised, as you know, it's been a report gone on to the, the site, and it's been done in a way that but in a ring-fenced way, that that's all we've been able to do. Basically, all we've done is said, well, we think that's a fair allocation, that's the way it should be done, and we've agreed that. So in some senses, whilst I accept your frustration, there's not a lot that has been, if you like, scrutinizable, if you like, in the sense that, you know, it needs scrutiny, because we've done it in an open way, we've done it in a, in, in a, in a fair way. And, and I think that leads me to the point that you make about, well, how do we structure this now going forward? How do we actually develop this going forward? And I think, you know, we are going to present uh, to yourselves and, and, and working with David and working with officers a, a, a view of having something ready by September that we can actually say, this is how we uh, feel and see it, it, it being done. But what I would remind you is, 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 is the comments that I made before, that when we are talking about, for instance, um, you know, uh, transport, you know, and the refranchising agreements and arrangements, then we've got Mersey Travel that is basically like a select committee that scrutinises decisions and makes recommendations to us. But if, for instance, on health and other things, I envisage or I imagine that one, and I, it's things that I've said to Andy, and it's things that I've said to the other leaders who are, have responsibilities for sectors, is that it's up to them to engage with the cabinet members across the city region. Yeah? So Andy will meet with the health uh, portfolio leads across the city region. But then there should be, there should be an opportunity for engagement for all councils who are on the health and social care select committees, if you like, on the health select committees, to get engaged and involved in shaping policy. That's the way I see it, and that's the way it should be. Now look, let's be absolutely clear, that there are some people um, who argue that uh, there's a real danger that the combined authority or what we set up, if you like, as an administration, becomes a super council. Becomes
holds, you know, the, the all in power and all uh, overseeing, uh, you know, decision making group and body representing the whole city region. And where there will be areas where that is the case, that is the case, because that's what government wants to do, for instance, in devolution on health or whatever other area. We don't want to replace, and we will never replace, the decision making that's made at the local level, but that's got to inform. It's got to permeate through, percolate upwards rather than downwards. So that's the way I see it, that the select committees that we have in existence will come forward to discuss and if you like have you know sort of policy conferences around how we shape um, health, how we work together, how we do things together. And then in that sense, that circumvents uh, you know the need for pre scrutiny because you're actually providing the solutions for us. See what I mean? So so it's important to have that pre scrutiny process so that you can say, well, you know, have we engaged with different people? Have we done that? But if we get it right in the first instance, if through the through the chairs, through the uh, cabinet members, and then through the select committees, and that we get fed through that information, that's how we work with, that's how we should be making those decisions. And I just hope you know, but, but, but it, it is going to be a question of shaping this you, shaping this you in how you want to do it, but I think that's for me fundamentally important that we don't isolate and cut, cut adrift and disconnect uh, the members in each of the borders and the select committees of what they want to achieve. Because you know, we've got in some senses it's it's two things. One is that we've got to make things better, join them together and working together. But equally we've also got to understand uh, each other's needs because all different and again, that's where scrutiny comes in, isn't it? If you haven't got that scrutiny, then you don't understand that. And so scrutiny will be just as importantly about pre-decision processes rather than you know, after the decision is made. Bill. Yeah. Sand. And 
and say, no, I'm not going to work with the voluntary sector to keep our libraries open. No, I'm not going to work with the schools and the voluntary sector to keep our children's centres open. And that is called pragmatic leadership, and that's what we're facing with here. We have a £40 billion deficit in adult social care. Will has a huge amount. Sefton has a huge amount. Now, I'm not entering into negotiations with government uh, to please government. I'm negotiating with central government to please the people that we were elected to represent. Now, if that means that we can take the adult social care budget, not debt, let people bandy around figures about debt. We haven't even got into talks with government yet. But when we do, it will be based on what we want, not what they want. And what we will do is work and negotiate with them how we can control adult social care. I'm not interested in taking other parts of the NHS. But if we can't provide adult social care for the people that we, would rep we represent, then we basically might as well pack our bags and give in. It's about negotiating a deal that is right for us. And let me give you an example of why it's important. Because the NHS, it costs around about £600 a night to keep an elderly person in hospital. My wife is a care assistant. Sometimes people are in there for three weeks who shouldn't be in there. And they shouldn't be in there because they haven't got anybody to look after them in the home. So if I can get that money and working with local authorities to create jobs that pay the de a decent wage, £400 a week, to keep somebody in home, look after them, we can provide step-up facilities. So instead of sending people to hospital because there's no one to look after them, we send them into the step-up facilities and that costs us less. We can build them, create apprenticeships, create jobs, and step down facilities, taking people out of hospitals and into those homes. And we pay someone £400 a week to look after them. That saves us money in the NHS. That's why we want to negotiate. That's why we want to do it. But let me just repeat, we're not doing it because we're in love with the Tory government. We're doing it because we're in love with the people that we represent. And I need to provide services to them, like care packages. And I can't do it without engaging. And I'm not going to bury my head in the sand just because some uh, young pup who doesn't understand the local government, who's got no idea about local government, she thinks that we shouldn't enter up because it's breaking the National Health Service. I, at 58 years of age, have been involved in local government for 18 years, uh, a long time when she was still at school. I won't take lectures of, of anybody, and neither will the leaders, because that's why we've all signed up, bar one, to enter into discussions, and that's what it is. And you'll play a part in that. You'll scrutinise whether it's valuable and whether it's the right thing to do. But Joe Anderson ain't going to bury his head in the sand and walk away from an opportunity to try and make a difference to the people that we were elected to represent. Councillor Joe. Thank you, Chair. Um, Joe, I've got a few questions. The first one, one of the ones you asked about asking you and maybe it needs to be part of somebody else. Um, so the last part of your report before this is about the consultation into government structures. Um, just wanted to find out basically how that's going, because that's now been opened in two weeks, that consultation. 
270 questions asked during the lifetime of that. About a hundred and three quarters of them were asked by the Green Party on bus lanes. Not about scrutiny of the decisions that we make were made. That went through the select committees and the, the decision making process, but was to play politics with it. The reality is, is that you know the decision on capacity, I've just told you, it's cost neutral to the city region, cost neutral to taxpayers. We're actually using them to actually support that. That's what it's about. Less than 1% or thereabouts. Better value for money than what we get in Whitehall. Better value for money than we actually indeed get in most of our councils. So, you know, the idea that, that you know, uh, scrutiny should be able to try and reverse decisions when the democratically elected leaders are taking cognizance and our hope. You know, because this is important. You know, when uh, any decision is made, whether it's around the combined authority or whether it's around other decisions, goes through the processes of select committees in my council. Now, that should apply everywhere else. So there's opportunity for questions, there's opportunity for debate, and there's opportunities, as you rightly said before, about free scrutiny. I want to play politics with it. That's the real data, and that's what... Well, no, I'm not saying you. I'm just saying from... Uh, my, my colleague from Liverpool City Council who, re who represents the Green Party. That, that's exactly what, 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 what he's suggesting here. And the reality is, is that won't happen. That won't happen. If we get the processes right at the beginning, that's engaging with the select committees. That, that report, that report on uh, the capacity should have been, should have been absolutely presented to you a, a, a week ago or whatever more than that, allowing you to actually engage in it. And why it wasn't done, I'll accept responsibility for that, because I wasn't aware that you hadn't seen it. And, and you should have done, because there's nothing in there to hide. Nothing, it's not we're trying to create a, uh, you know, a, an institution or, or a structure that uh, is going to benefit anybody other than you, other than the people that we represent. And you should have seen it. You should have had opportunities to scrutinize. But not, not to say, and send it back and hold us back. That's not what scrutiny is about. It might be what you want, but it's not what scrutiny is about. Some of the 
inequality, it will be a chunk of that money, probably, uh, I guess, I'm about 3 million, uh, 3.5 million, that will be needed to actually, in addition, and that will come directly out of the gain share of the funds and that will be negotiated. That's what I mean by cost neutral. I have got some uh, limited reports that you only heard this morning, um, but if anybody wants one,